Hi guys, I'm here to show you today the uh, Formiski's uh, fluttering caddis. It's a great little pattern that um, we've been tying and fishing for a couple years now, and uh, finally took me took me about three years to figure out how to do this correctly. And I think I've got it down to the way I like to tie it. Um, so I'll show you a couple of those tricks here, and um, um, kind of walk you through it. So I'm just going to start with a size 16 hook and uh, some tan or sand colored thread just coat the hook shank there just to get some coloration in it and I'm using 6 aught you can use uh, 6 or 8 and then what I've done is I've cut a piece of uh, 2 mil foam roughly 2 mil by 2.5 or somewhere around there uh, maybe even 3 and cut them out with strips razor blade best way to do that now to get the body I'm going to have it finished in like this and I'll show you how I did that kind of came about by accident um, so once you cut it straight I got a pair of regular scissors here and um, what I'm gonna do is just place those in the back there leave a little bit out the back get a lighter burn melt, to melt it and then I just pinch that in the jaws what happens is it melts it, it kind of fuses it together. Kind of gives you that uh, nice finish into it. So that's what I'm using. That's the way I'm doing it. Place those right on the hook shank. Find out where you're going to tie it in. Cut. And put a little layer of thread there. And I'm just going to lay it down. Capture it with my thread. Don't need to tie in too much or tie it down too much just enough make sure your body's not too long Could probably even shorten it up a little bit and then I get my uh, widow's web um, as an underwing what I'm getting is just a strand of that and you can probably substitute anything else as far as antron or anything just as long as it's not holding too much water cutting that so it's got a good even tips for the tie-in just lay it right up on top a few wraps to tie it in and then cut just a little bit longer than that uh, body and then what I'm using on this for the wing is a, a nice piece of deer hair and um, the reason I'm using the deer is because it flares real nice I'm going to scoot this out of the way you can see is it it's soft soft enough that um, when I lay it on there it flares really well it's got good coloration and um, if I used elk, which I did before, it still flares. It'll give you pretty decent results, but uh, not great results. So once I went to the deer, it made a huge difference in what and how the fly came out. So I'm only grabbing just a little bit of, of hair. Not a lot. And again, this is soft deer. And the thing with this is you don't even have to stack it um, if you don't need to. If you're in a hurry, you're trying to bust some of these out, you can just lay it in there, but I just put a little bit in, in the hair stacker and stack a um, couple, couple uh, times on the table just to get it get the tips even. Okay, once I lay, once I get that I just lay it right up on top there. A little bit of the tips extending back and then put a couple wraps and just kind of bite through it a little bit. Now the reason I like this deer hair in particular is because it flares so so well and those tips, or the butts actually, are, are fairly long. And that's kind of key on this because I then grab all the butts, come at an angle, and cut them. So what you're doing is you're having basically one wing there. Now these, these butts I keep because I'm going to lay that underneath kind of at an angle and that's going to be my bottom portion um, when I flare that hair just like that. So those butts are fairly soft, they flare really well and what you'll see is on, the, on, on my side um, if I start wrapping over everything it's gonna you'll form what I call bubbles in the hair, it'll kind of fold it over so what I do is I just kind of push them, sweep them back, made a couple wraps through it just to secure everything and then I push everything back to get kind of an 
in front there. So I have a little bit of space. Alright, I'm going to grab another small bunch of hair. And that's, and I say small, it's, 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 um, half or even less than what, um, you would probably normally get for, say, a caddis or something like that. So it's just a, a few strands, not very much at all. Then I'm going to lay that, notice I have the space right there behind the eye. I'm going to lay that right up on top, try to match those previous, um, length of the hair and then just lay that on a couple wraps flare and then these butts I just kind of push back and bite into them again with my thread get them out of the way and then make sure and it may take a little bit of practice to not crowd the eye if you do you get a pin or something to push all that hair back and then you can um, pack the hair and put whip finishes or, or actually half hitches with your thread when you do that. So, and all I did was push my scissors to cut that. Now we want to look at this, make sure everything's somewhat, um, um, as far as the foam goes, somewhat uh, straight on the hook. I usually pull this out of the vise to cut. I'm just going to leave it here and start clipping. What I'm trying to do, and it's really essential that you have a good pair of scissors for this come in here and just start clipping at an angle now I will pull it out of the vise and show you what I'm doing so I take a bite on the side there right there come underneath and cut pretty close okay so you can see I kinda have a flat body there on bottom and then I kind of just shape it and it doesn't take a whole lot Try to get that in focus there um, what you're looking at is just a kind of a flat bottom good caddis profile if you need to take some off the side you can and um, basically that's it so what I'm doing tying these in tan for the most part. You can tie them in black. You can tie them in yellow for little yellow sallies or uh, whatever you need to match. Um, olive. Um, tan's being my most useful fly um, pretty much for the summer. So it's it's got great flotation. It's got um, foam. It's got buoyant deer and um, pretty durable. So it's a great little pattern once you uh, once you figure out what you're doing, um, you know it, it, it's a it's a three minute fly or so. You can crank them out pretty easy. If you don't stack the hair, you can crank them out even faster. So, um, great little pattern to have for any waters that you want to fish. So again, the the black, the yellow, the tan, and the um, olive are great patterns to have. Great colors to have.